What's poppin' YouTube? My name is Melon Sox. Two months ago, I started my crypto journey by spending a lot of money on Axie Infinity. Now my goal is to achieve financial freedom through NFT gaming. If you're looking to do the same thing, then buckle up and let's dive into today's video. Today we're going to be talking about Double Aquas. Why I personally have been running Double Aquas for the past two seasons and why I think you should run a Double Aqua build in the upcoming Season 19 Arena. Now, double aquas are great, especially for low elo. Double aquas are really good because they have high damage and high speed. So when you put those two together, you pretty much beat everyone you're gonna run into. All right, so let's put together a good double aqua team right now. Now, the main thing is on your backliner, you're gonna want Koi. And I personally love the Kaku version of the double aquas. I actually have an impure one, so it's at 55 speed but you're more often than not going to want a 57 speed aqua personally i like goldfish and lamb that's what i run but there are a ton of different variations and of course axie infinity is a game with an ever-changing meta you can browse for whatever you think is good whatever you think is right not financial advice but yeah this is what i run and i recommend this type of aqua for your backliner Gameplay is pretty straightforward. You know exactly what you're going to do. You're going to speed up with the Koi, use Kaku to get rid of like stuns from Terminators, and then Lamb is for the 1v1 where you just deal extra damage when you are low health. Goldfish is really good too because you get to get extra speed, and that comes really handy when you're doing the mirror match versus another double aqua team. Now for the midliner, pretty much the same thing, except now... We're going to get Nemo as our zero cost card for the energy game. That is the most important part. I recommend a risky fish on the mouth. Nemo, risky fish. Personally, I go sponge, but that's more of like a premium type of aqua build. You don't have to do this. You could go for another goldfish. You could even go for something like perch is good for backdoor potential. You could go hermit if you want. That just gives you extra shield. I like to have flexibility, so sponge is what I have gone with. And the horn is where most people change things up. If you want to be really basic, you could go with the Oranda. High damage dealing card, and it ends last stands. Um, Shoal Star, same thing. If you are going for the most premium version of this build, you could go for Sinister Strike, the dual blade. And these ones go for 0 0.098 at the floor. So just be aware of that. An alternative version you could go is the pliers on the horn, which is a bug part. So you lose out on a little bit of speed, but it gives you plus 30% extra damage to shielded targets, which is really good for taking out plants, reptiles, dust, the more challenging counters for the double aqua build. So that is something you could definitely consider. Now, if you're going to look for a plant, cactus, hot butt, serious, and pumpkin. This is a great beginner plant, and they're pretty cheap too. This kind of tank is something you're looking for. It has damage, energy steals, and it disables your target's mouth card, which is really handy at the start of games. When you draw this first, you hit the enemy's tank with it so they can't serious you in the next round. And then you have the option to skip that turn, save some energy, and then destroy their tank on turn three. So that's really valuable. Really love hot butt. And then the rest of these cards are great. So that is the build. Let's go check out some gameplay. All right, let's see what we get. Bird, beast, and plant. This is going to be a piece of cake. So I'm going to throw out the hot butt here. Disable this guy, Sirius, and then we'll see where we go from there. We'll see how he plays it. He decides to skip. So he's at five. He could have the rimp combo. So I will be a little cautious. Throw out a pumpkin. And yep, he has a beast combo. We pumpkined and we hot butted, which gave us extra, extra shield. So we're chilling right now. He just used four energy, so he's going to be at one. I'm going to use our midliners cards right now, because one, we have Risky Fish, 
We gain attack when we hit the plant. And we're going to get a little bit of shield, which will be useful if this guy thinks about backdooring us. Or even if he eggshells here, we just get rid of the plant. Or we get rid of the bird. So either way, we're chilling. He gains two energy here, which is whatever. But um, yeah, we're going to get him real low. He gets rid of our plant, unfortunately. But we are still in a great position here. I do not think this guy is enough to kill us. He actually has four cards. So that's really bad for us. <laughs> and he has the eggshell, so the plant's gonna live. We are royally screwed. So he's gonna pass here, which is good because we can get rid of this, get rid of his plant and his beast. And we're just gonna play so we get the most shield and speed. So he's gonna get no value out of his beast cards, which is great. And I'm that's so unlucky that he last stands. But he only get ooh. See, this is fine because we are faster than his bird now. And we can just kind of play all of our cards and he can't do anything. So this guy almost turned it around, but you see how we won with such a huge disadvantage at the beginning. We lost our plant, we lost our midliner. 1v3, our backliner just destroyed this bird beast plant combo. So yeah, that is the power of the double aqua build. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.